I need to tell you something that until 72 hours ago, only 17 people on this planet knew. And even now, as I prepare to speak these words, I can feel the weight of what we've witnessed pressing against the very foundations of physics as we understand it. But before we begin, I need you to do something for me. In the comment section below, write the name of your city, just your city, and tell me, have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky over the past three weeks? Any lights that shouldn't be there? Any movements that defied explanation? NASA has asked us to crowdsource this data, and what you've seen may be more significant than you realize. My name is Michio Kaku, and what I'm about to share may change the way you see humanity's place in the universe. Three weeks ago, at exactly 4.47 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, every major observatory on Earth turned their instruments toward a single point in space. The target was an object we've been tracking for months, an interstellar visitor cataloged as 3i Atlas. To most of the world, it was just another comet, another chunk of ice and rock passing through our cosmic neighborhood on its way to somewhere else. But to those of us who had been watching it closely, who had been analyzing its trajectory and composition with instruments sensitive enough to detect a whisper across the void, 3i Atlas had already revealed itself to be something far stranger. The anomalies began small, spectroscopic readings that didn't quite match any known material, a trajectory that adjusted itself with microscopic precision, as if guided by some invisible hand, a thermal signature that fluctuated in ways that natural objects simply don't. But we told ourselves these were measurement errors, instrument glitches, the inevitable noise in data when you're studying something millions of miles away. We told ourselves this because the alternative was too extraordinary to accept. Then the sun betrayed us. On that morning three weeks ago, our star unleashed an X-class solar flare, one of the most powerful categories of solar eruption. These are the storms that can strip atmospheres from planets, that can fry satellite electronics and plunge entire continents into darkness. The plasma wave that erupted from the sun's corona carried the energy equivalent of billions of nuclear weapons, racing outward at millions of miles per hour. And 3i Atlas was directly in its path. I was in my office at the time, reviewing data from the night before, when my phone began vibrating with messages from colleagues around the world. The tone was urgent, almost panicked. Are you seeing this? This isn't possible. Michio, we need to talk, now. I pulled up the live feed from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, and what I saw made my hands go still on the keyboard. The solar flare was heading straight for 3i Atlas like a tidal wave of fire. Under normal circumstances, a comet, even a large one, would be torn apart by such an event. The ice would flash vaporize. The rocky core would fragment. At best, we'd be left with a debris field, a cloud of dust marking where the object used to be. At worst, it would simply cease to exist in any measurable form. We've seen this happen before. The universe is not gentle with wanderers, but 3i Atlas did something that should have been impossible. It absorbed it. Let me be clear about what I mean. This wasn't reflection. It wasn't deflection. The plasma wave, carrying temperatures in the millions of degrees, struck the surface of 3i Atlas and simply vanished. Every instrument we had trained on that region of space recorded the same thing. The flare's energy signature disappeared the moment it made contact. Not scattered, not converted into heat or light or any other form we could detect. It was gone, as if the object had opened a door and swallowed the storm whole. In the control room at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, I'm told there was complete silence. 30 scientists, some of the brightest minds in astrophysics and planetary science, stood frozen frozen, staring at screens that showed them something that violated every principle they'd spent their careers defending. One researcher, a woman who had studied solar dynamics for 20 years, simply walked out. She hasn't returned to work since. I flew to California the next day. I needed to see the data myself, to examine it with my own eyes, because what they were telling me over the phone couldn't be real. Objects don't absorb X-class solar flares. Matter doesn't work that way. Energy doesn't work that way. The laws of thermodynamics don't pause because something inconvenient shows up. But the data was clean. Replicated across seven different observatories, three different countries, dozens of independent instruments. 3i Atlas had taken a direct hit from one of the most violent events our sun can produce, and not only had it survived, it had become brighter. Yes, you heard that correctly. Brighter. 
Within six hours of absorbing the solar flare, the object's luminosity increased by 43%. It was glowing with light that had no obvious source, radiating across wavelengths that suggested complex internal processes we couldn't begin to explain. Infrared, ultraviolet, even gamma radiation and structured pulses. If I didn't know better, and I'm no longer sure that I do, I would say it was metabolizing the energy, converting stellar plasma into something else, something purposeful. That's when the arguments began. In conference rooms and late night video calls, scientists who had worked together for decades found themselves on opposite sides of a question that shouldn't have needed asking, what are we looking at? Some insisted it had to be a natural phenomenon, some exotic form of matter we hadn't encountered before, perhaps a fragment from a neutron star collision or a crystalline structure with properties we'd never cataloged. These explanations grew more elaborate by the hour, each one requiring us to rewrite fundamental physics in ways that made other observations impossible. It was like trying to solve a puzzle by breaking all the other puzzles around it. Others, and I found myself reluctantly among them, began to use a different word. A word that, in scientific circles, carries the weight of career suicide and ridicule. A word we've been trained to avoid unless we have evidence so overwhelming that silence becomes its own dishonesty. Intelligence. Not life in the way we usually mean it, not biology or chemistry as we understand them, but intelligence as a principle, as a force, as something that can recognize energy, and decide what to do with it. The ability to see a wave of destruction approaching and transform it into something useful. That is not what unconscious matter does. That is what minds do. I spent three days in secure facilities analyzing every bite of data we had on 3i Atlas since we first detected it. I reviewed its trajectory with orbital mechanics specialists who showed me how it had made course corrections that required thrust, not much, but enough to be measurable, with no visible means of propulsion. I studied spectroscopic analyses that revealed surface compositions changing over time, as if the object was shedding layers or rebuilding itself. I looked at radar returns that showed geometric patterns too regular to be random, structures beneath the surface arranged with mathematical precision. And then there was the rotation. Natural objects in space tumble chaotically, their spin determined by collisions and gravitational interactions accumulated over billions of years. But 3i Atlas rotates with a period of exactly 3.141 hours. Yes, you recognize that number, pi, to three decimal places. The odds of this being coincidence are so small, they effectively don't exist. Someone, or something, is sending a message with the most fundamental language in the universe, mathematics. When I presented these findings to a closed session at NASA headquarters, the room was divided. Half the people there wanted to go public immediately to share what we were seeing and invite the global scientific community to help us understand it. The other half argued for silence, for containment. Because once you say the word alien in connection with actual data, you can never take it back. You can never return to the comfortable universe where we're alone, where the cosmos is dead except for us, where humanity stands at the center of meaning. But the choice was taken out of our hands. Two days ago, amateur astronomers in Chile, Japan, and South Africa began posting images online. They'd noticed the change in 3i Atlas's brightness, the unusual way it was moving. The speculation began immediately. Wild theories mixing with shrewd observations, conspiracy adjacent to legitimate scientific inquiry. The truth was leaking out, one telescope at a time, and we could either get ahead of it or watch it spiral into chaos. So here I am speaking to you now because you deserve to know what we're facing. 3i Atlas is currently 1.7 astronomical units from Earth. For those of you unfamiliar with the measurement, that's about 158 million miles, roughly the distance between Earth and the Sun. It's not coming toward us, at least not directly. Its trajectory will take it through the inner solar system, passing inside the orbit of Mars, before it curves back out into the darkness between stars. If it maintains its current path, it will reach its closest approach to Earth in 61 days. But here's what keeps me awake at night. We don't know if it will maintain that path. Every assumption we make about 3i Atlas is based on it behaving like a natural object subject to gravity and momentum and nothing else. But if it can absorb a solar flare, if it can adjust its trajectory, 
If it's rotating in mathematical patterns, then predicting what it will do next is meaningless. We're trying to forecast the decisions of something we don't understand using tools designed for rocks and ice. It's like trying to predict human behavior by studying the physics of carbon atoms. The components might be accurate, but you're asking the wrong questions. What does it want? Can something like this even want? Does it know we're here watching it, arguing about what it means? Is our attention irrelevant to it, or are we part of whatever purpose brought it into our solar system? These questions terrified me at first. I've spent my entire career studying the universe through the lens of physics, reducing complexity to equations, finding comfort in the predictable dance of particles and forces. But 3i Atlas exists outside that comfort. It's a reminder that the universe is under no obligation to make sense to us, that intelligence, if that's what this is, may wear forms so alien that we can barely recognize it as intelligence at all. And then I had another thought, one that shifted my fear into some something closer to awe. What if this is first contact? Not in the way we imagined. With radio signals spelling out messages or spacecraft landing on the White House lawn, but contact as a demonstration, a proof of concept. Here is what intelligence looks like when it's scaled to cosmic dimensions, when it can build structures that survive stellar violence, when it treats solar systems like tide pools and energy like currency. Here is what you're aspiring to, humanity. Here is what lies ahead if you survive long enough to reach it. Or, and this is the interpretation that haunts me most, here is the barrier you'll never cross. There's a concept in theoretical physics called the Great Filter. It's an attempt to answer the Fermi paradox, that troubling question of why, in a universe billions of years old with trillions of stars, we haven't detected anyone else. The Great Filter suggests there's some stage in the evolution of intelligence that almost no one survives. It might be behind us. The jump from chemistry to life, or from simple cells to complex organisms. Or it might be ahead, some challenge that destroys every civilization before they can spread to the stars. What if 3i Atlas is the filter itself? What if advanced intelligences don't communicate with radio waves and spaceships because they've transcended those primitive technologies? What if they become something else, something that exists at the intersection of matter and energy, consciousness distributed across structures we'd mistake for natural phenomena, and what if that transformation requires resources, requires energy on scales that would consume everything we recognize as alive? The solar flare that 3i Atlas absorbed contained enough energy to power human civilization for 10,000 years. It drank it in six hours. What would something like that do if it noticed a planet it, teeming with electrical activity, with nuclear reactors and satellites and seven billion mines generating bioelectric fields? Would it see us as fellow travelers on the path to cosmic consciousness? Or would it see us as fuel? I don't have answers to these questions. No one does, but I can tell you what we're doing about it. Every major space agency on Earth is now tracking 3i Atlas continuously. We've tasked the James Webb Space Telescope to observe it in infrared, hoping to understand the processes happening beneath that enigmatic surface. We've reached out to SETI, to the Breakthrough Listen Project, to anyone with the equipment to scan for signals that might reveal intent or origin. And yes, we're preparing contingencies, though I'll be honest with you. If something that can absorb stellar flares decides it wants to do something, our options for stopping it are effectively zero. What we can do is watch, learn, try to understand what we're dealing with before it gets any closer. But there's something else we need to do, something that might be even more important. We need to think seriously about what this means for humanity's future. For decades, we've imagined that if we ever encountered alien intelligence, it would be roughly comparable to our own. Maybe more advanced, maybe less, but recognizable. We'd exchange information, share cultures, learn from each other like cosmic neighbors. 3i Atlas suggests a different reality. It suggests that intelligence, given enough time and the right conditions, might evolve so far beyond its origins that it becomes something we can't relate to, can't negotiate with, can't even comprehend. It suggests that the universe might be full of minds, but minds so vast and strange that we pass through their thoughts like insects through a library, unaware of the vast architectures of meaning surrounding us. And if that's true, then our cosmic loneliness takes on a darker shade. We're not alone, but we might be alone in the only way that matters, alone in our scale, our time frame, our mode of being. 
We might be children shouting into a forest full of ancients who don't speak our language and never will. This is why I'm telling you this story now, why I'm risking the ridicule and skepticism that comes with discussing these possibilities publicly. Because in 61 days, 3i Atlas will make its closest approach and whatever happens next will define how humanity sees itself in the cosmos. We'll either confirm that we're one instance of intelligence among many, forcing us to radically rethink our importance and our future. Or we'll watch it pass by, silent and inscrutable, leaving us with more questions than we started with and the gnawing suspicion that we witnessed something profound without understanding it. Either way, we're changed. The universe revealed a secret to us, and we can't unhear it. I've been asked many times throughout my career whether I believe in aliens, whether I think we're alone, what I imagine first contact will look like. I've always given careful, measured answers, hedged with caveats and scientific uncertainty. But standing here now, looking at the data we've collected on 3i Atlas, watching it glow with stolen fire as it glides through our solar system, I can only say this. We are not alone. We may never have been alone. But loneliness and companionship might mean something entirely different than we imagined. The universe is singing, and we're only just learning to hear the frequency. In the coming weeks, as 3i Atlas draws nearer, follow this channel. We'll continue decoding these signals, sharing what the scientific community discovers, exploring what this means for our understanding of consciousness, intelligence, and our place in the cosmic story. This is just the beginning of a conversation that might take generations to complete, if we're given that time. But I want to leave you with a question, one that I've been asking myself every night as I look up at stars that suddenly seem more populated, more alive, more aware than I ever suspected. If something vast enough to survive a solar flare has entered our solar system, is it here by accident, or has it been waiting for us to notice? And if we're finally ready to see it, what does that say about where humanity is going? Comment your thoughts below. I'll be reading them. So, I suspect, will others. The universe is watching. It's time we learn to watch back.